Hello, Dr. Meza. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you today. It's a great pleasure. It's great, it's great. great pleasure. We're going to set the ball rolling. What brings you to Washington, D.C. this time? Well, I'm here for uh, the inauguration of the new president of the United States. And uh, I'll be here uh, having meetings with some of the leadership here. When I come to D.C., I have meetings at the U.S. Congress, uh, both sides both Republicans and Democrats. But uh, as you said, I'm a scientist, an inventor, an author, and a technologist. And technology doesn't know any politics. So I use my technology to help the U.S. government in all areas so that the United States can be a number one in technology. And as you know, my work in fiber optics speaks for itself. I'm one of the original creators of this technology because now everybody gets on Facebook, they send their pictures all over, but I'm one of the four people in the United States that helped create this technology. I actually made it possible so that fiber optics is so cheap that it can be manufactured on large scale so that you can replace all the copper cables in America with this technology. This means fiber optics can then be used to send videos, YouTube videos, to send Google information, to send Facebook pictures at the speed of laser light on the fiber optics cable. So I'm here uh, for the inaugural, but I'm here for some meetings also. So Dr. Mesa, you're on record as having been the inventor of fiber optic and having the patent to that. Right. So, doing all these stuff for the American government, what is your plan for Africa? Do you intend to go support these initiatives or introduce these initiatives to Africa? Yes. Uh, well, I, as I've said on some television programs, uh, including Voice of America, uh, I know that the internet penetration rate in Africa is very low. It's about 5%, whereas the United States is about 90%. So one of my main goals is how can we introduce technology to Africa uh, to help the countries in Africa. Because if we can increase the penetration of internet platform in Africa, even from 5 to even 20 or 25 or 30, that means we can have a little girl in some village in Africa can sit with a tablet and learn at the same rate as the little two-year-old here in America. So I'm glad you pointed that out. I, I'm from Ghana, and I want to make sure that the countries in Africa, we are targeting about five countries, that they have the ability to at least increase the penetration rate of the, of the internet platform so they can catch up. Okay, because I believe but right now, something called STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Maths, yes. is the way to go. Yes. So what role are you playing to encourage the youth and upcoming uh, students to be able to take up uh, these uh, programs in this area? That's a very, very good question. Uh, I tell people in my book, the right stuff comes in black, that I'll talk about later, that I got interested in STEM when I was a little kid. When I saw Neil Armstrong, uh, land on the moon, watching a black and white TV in, in Accra, I said, wait a minute, that kind of guy can land on the moon, I will either make machines that go to space or I'll, go to, I'll become an astronaut. And now I'm making machines that go to, to space. I, 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 I work on all my area vehicles, I work on satellites, I work on technology that helps protect people when they go into space. So beyond fiber optics and the telecom, that's a new area I have. In fact, I have a book called Frontiers of Nanotechnology that's being published by Wiley. It's coming out probably in the next few months. And so STEM is very, very important to me. I was lucky. Not everybody can be self-initiated, self-actualized. I was just lucky in Ghana to say, hey, that's what I want to do. But so what I'm doing now, I've done it to at least 15 cities in the United States where I go to different cities and encourage the youth and the kids to get into STEM. I've done it uh, at Microsoft, 
in Seattle at their headquarters, the historically black colleges. I've done it in Florida. I've done it all the way from primary, elementary, and high schools. I speak to these kids, just motivate them, use videos and, and things to excite them to get into uh, STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and math. This is very, very important. You're going to have a kid that you can spark their interest in science and engineering, and they can be making the same contributions that I have made that has impacted my kind. So when I sit here and see that there are a billion people connected to the internet, and I'm one of the few people, the only black among the four people that develop this technology for the United States, I want to make sure that kids get introduced into this, uh, this STEM field very early on, from two-year-olds all the way to high schools when they graduate, and continue to push them through universities that, I, that, that just like I did, from, from tech starting from a disco all the way to tech and then to France and from France to MIT in the United States to Bell Laboratories and all. So I want to see these kids have the, 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 have the ability to focus and stay on STEM and excel, you know, in these STEM fields so that they can be number one and change the world as I did. You are an inspiration to the African community and to the Ghanaian community as well. And I would like to ask, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, somebody watching us right now will be encouraged to be able to follow your footsteps. My background is very, very simple. And if you look at the book, there, there one. This is I have four books. This is just one of them. The right stuff comes in black too. Uh, it's it's. If you look at this book, you find out that I came from Kumasi. And I was born in Kumasi, grew up there, went to Wesley College Practice School. And from then on, I went to a disco. And in a disco, I, I, I focused on STEM. That, that is, I wanted to be an engineer. I knew that. I did O levels and A levels, Excel, and went to UST and did chemical engineering. And then I got a I got fellowship. I was awarded fellowship by the French government. So I went to Montpellier in France, did engineering, chemical engineering. And from there, got another scholarship to MIT. I've had scholarship throughout my life, and 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 at MIT I did I, I had a certificate in modeling and simulation of chemical processes, postgraduate studies, but I also serve on the MIT advisory board, which is the visiting committee, when they bring people from outside to tell MIT how they should change their courses so that MIT can be number one. I did that when I was at Bell Laboratories. I've been a, on the board of directors at American Institute of Chemical Engineers. I have published three books through American Institute of Chemical Engineers, all in engineering. And I've served on various committees helping the AICHE. And I also serve in the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, where I'm an associate fellow. I'm a fellow of American Institute of Chemical Engineers, associate fellow of uh, AIAA. American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And I'm also a fellow recently of the National Academy of Inventors. This award and recognition, there were 167 inventors throughout the world. I was among the only three to be to be selected as a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors. Thank you, Dr. Mesa. You have a long list of accomplishments, and um, this is great. Do you intend to go do anything in Ghana after you retire? I don't have to wait till I retire to do anything in Ghana. I would actually be doing things in Ghana and some African countries because I want to help our country. Awesome. We're looking forward to that. Excellent. So I'm so privileged to meet with you, and thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited to have this interview. Thank you. I'm excited with the new government, Nanado and his team. Okay. We're going to help them move the country forward. Great. In the world, yo, this is the black dreams. Don't let nobody look down on you. Work hard for the whole fame, yo. This is the black dreams. So many people want to be rich and famous, but they're lacking it. Because they ain't working hard to achieve that dream, achieve that goal. They are late in the game. They need to resurrect from their deep sleep and work towards dedication dreams. Keep moving like a flying kite, not withstanding light. Because they ain't looking back for a fight. God is the king for